So now we move on to system configuration and system V or five is the correct name, system five. I'll call it V because whenever I see Roman numerals, which is what that V is, um, I don't try and translate the number. I just read it out aloud. So I'll just call it system V um, as I know a lot of people do anyway. So uh, some information about it. Let's move on and install the boot scripts for LFS. So we need to go back to the sources directory and extract. Did I leave any directories there? No, I don't think I did. Let's just see if I need to tidy anything up there. No, there's no directories. So let's extract the LFS boot scripts, change into it. And once again, follow the instructions, which is just a make install. And then we can tidy that up. Overview of device and module handling. So there's information there which you should read to understand what's happening. Um, and it describes how UDEV works and what happens if it doesn't work. Managing devices. So we need to create custom UDEV rules with this command here. And it says to find out um, which name was assigned to the network device. Now, generally, I think they recommend using ETH0 because the they say that the name that appears here might not be the name that um, Linux from Scratch uses. I've never come across a situation where it has changed. Um, though clearly it, it can change. The name in this case for my network card is ENP2S0, um, which is the name I've seen at any other time for this machine. So um, I can't see that that is going to change. Um, but that's worth remembering. Um, it says there about creating custom rules if you need to. Um, Again, for CD-ROM, if you want to see what the values are for what the scripts use, you can run that and so on. So a lot of this you probably won't need unless you do have issues or you want to configure, say, multiple devices. Um, yeah, deal dealing with duplicate devices, it says if each of your devices like to have this problem, um, you need to figure out their attributes and then write rules that create the sim links for your multiple devices. And as you see, that the what it's saying here is that if you've got a webcam and a TV tuner, one might get assigned to video zero, another reboot, the other device might get assigned to video zero. But by creating this rule, you'll have access to TV tuner and t and a webcam which will always point at the correct device ir irrespective of whether it's video zero or video one so that's what that's saying so general network configuration what we do is we change into etc config and create a default file now as i say um, you can see this ETH zeros in italics um, i've tended to find that doesn't really work these days um, with well, by default, I think. So what I do is I just copy the name that's um, uh, given there in that command. Alternatively, you can find out what's currently in use. As I say, beware, as it says in the book somewhere, that it might actually be different uh, name assigned by Linux from scratch. But um, as I've also said before, I've generally not found that to be the case. or well, in fact, I've, I can't even think of one time and it has, has actually been the case. But you can see there's the device that's in use. You can see it's up at the moment. Uh, and that ties up with what UDEV came back with. So 
create the file name with the correct name for your network card. Um, again, well, I'll just copy the rest of this and edit it. It's probably easiest rather than copy bits of it. So if I now use Vi to edit that, I have config emp2s0. I need to change the device name to emp2s0. And I need to assign some IP addresses. So you need to find out what's available in your network. I'm going to use that one. My gateway, again, you need to find out what your gateway is. Is that, and therefore the broadcast is going to be on that subnet. And as it says, there, everything in Telex needs to be altered depending on uh, your own configuration. The etc resolve file, let's copy that and then edit it as simplest. So my domain, if you haven't got one, just leave this blank or delete the line completely. I've got one called mynet.org. The name server, I run a name server, so I'll put that in. Otherwise, just use the um, name server that your router uses. Uh, and you can put a secondary one in. The secondary one I use is 9.9.9.9, uh, .9 .9 .9, which is quad 9. They aim to give a free name service um, that's security conscious. Um, they suggest the Google ones, but um, a lot of people have issues with Google. So you might want to use another one. I think there's Cloudflare as one, another one that's available to use. But as I say, use Quad9, which is based in Switzerland, I believe. Uh, this one here. And you can see the IPv4 is 9.9.9.9. .9 .9. There's a secondary name server, that, server there for IPv4 and there's IPv6 addresses as well. And somewhere there is somewhere you can see if you if you are uh, using it or not. And there's loads of information there. And yeah, I can't remember. Let me just check. I've got it on another machine. If you do decide to use it and you want to make sure that you are configured correctly, right, so it's actually, this is probably somewhere from this page, but the URL is quicker to go to. It's just on.quad9.net and you can see that my network is configured to use it. So, might be something different to look at. Um, configuring the host name, so I'll call this LFS 12-3. So if we just cut that, make sure that looks okay. There it is. And customizing the etc host file. So they give a default here, which we can put in and then edit. So all we need to do is to, well, I'm going to delete the um, IP6 because I don't, I don't use that at all. And then just change these bits in the angular brackets to match what I've already entered. So my IP address that I've chosen to use is 0101. The fully qualified domain name is the host name, 12-3, followed by the domain. And then the host name by itself. And then there aren't any other aliases, but I could give it another one if I wanted to. And then this, um, I can't remember what this is for now, but apparently some distributions use this for some reason. I can't remember what it is, but... If I just delete that and then copy this information here, 
into there because it's in the same format that should suffice again I can cut that just to make sure that looks normal uh, hosts so that looks fine system v boot script usage and configuration so we need to create an init tab which defines what to do at various levels and on what terminals, what virtual terminals will be created. There's some information about the run levels. Configuring the system clock. So if you have got the clock set to local time, you need to change that UTC to a zero. Um, otherwise, it's probably best to leave it as a one. If the machine, especially this one, it's only got Linux on it. If you're sharing it with the Windows machine or DOS, um, you'll need to change that to zero so that you're not continually changing the time as you boot into each operating system. Uh, the console, let's copy that. And I always modify this to add in the um, log level, just so not getting too many kernel messages appearing so etc sysconfig console um, and it changes font because for the western Europe I think that should be a one um, in fact I'll check that in a moment let's put the log level in uh, how's it spelt all one word equals three um, if you go to, have I got it here? Save me hunting for it because I can never remember where it is. No, it doesn't specifically say where the fonts are, but they're in slash user slash share um, console fonts. So any one of those is a console font. So for example, ISO 05.16 is what you'd enter if you wanted to use that one. They've defaulted to Terminus, LAT2 Terminus 16. So that's that one there. Um, now the LAT means Latin. I presume it's the same for this one. And the 2 is for central europe i think it is it basically defines what fonts appear where um so it might not be what you want uh, what does it say about it here uh, the console font ship by the kbd package contain the glyphs for all the characters from the program messages in c utf8 locale so it's basically saying any of these would be safe to use. Um, oh, there it is. Look, user share console fonts. The other ship console fonts lack glyphs of some characters like the Unicode, left, right, quotation marks, and Unicode English dash. Um, set one of them, for example. Okay, so it's probably recommended to leave that as that two terminus. Uh, or if you like any of these other ones, if they are... Uh, uh, better for you for some reason and I believe if you use the set uh, where is it so I saw it somewhere set fonts yeah I think there's a preview command. Uh, let's run that by itself. Console map. Um, I've just realized it probably won't make any difference because I'm on a remote console anyway. This is only for the local console. 
So um, I'm actually going to leave that as it is because it sounds like that Terminal 16 would be good to ensure all the glyphs are displayed correctly. So I'm just going to view that again, eyeball it quickly, make sure it looks okay. Yes, it does. Um, I'm not sure if I need to put that three in quotes actually, being as all the other assignments are in quotes. So I'm going to do that just to be sure. Yeah, everything else is in quotes, so. Yeah, that should be okay. Um, shows you how you can configure the syscalog D script if you wish by changing parameters uh, in this RC site. They just put this up here for information. It should already look like that on the disk. So there's nothing more to do with that. Configuring the system locale. So we can find out what locales are available by typing that command in. And these are all the locales that created to enable the full coverage of the test. So um, a lot of these you probably don't need. I think you can delete them. There's a command to delete them. I'm not sure if it is locale. No, it must be another command. I'm pretty sure you can remove them from the system. Um, but for this this purposes, demonstration purposes, I'm just going to leave them as they are. The one I usually use is this one here. So I can find out what the output of this command will be from preferred locale by putting that in and then changing this part of the command to the one that I want to use. So let's just highlight that again, paste that in and press enter. And well, it's the same as the example in the book. You can see that it's responded in the same way as you might expect. You can find out other information about the locale by typing these commands in. So what I'm going to do now is to copy this up to the point where I'll need to enter the locale. So the first bit is the um, country or region and country, uh, language and country, I think it is. So engb dot and then the output of this command. Um, there are no modifiers, so I'll just copy from that to the end paste that in and that should be it and once again I'll just look at that to make sure it looks okay yep laying equals the in underscore gb dot iso etc so that's fine input rc file so just copy this just configures the keyboard ensures that some of the function keys work correctly like the um where you can see end of history page up and page down and the up and down arrows and so on and the home and end buttons just make sure they behave as you'd expect create a shells file to sell the system or any program that wants to interrogate the system as to what shells are available 